Was Kyle McCord really pushed out of Columbus by Ryan Day and company? Turns out that may be true. The quarterback, former Ohio State quarterback, bears all. And we'll be covering that next on Darren Talks Ball. All right, so it turns out that after months of speculation and rumor and things floating around about Kyle McCord and his situation with having left Ohio State, he goes on record on a podcast today, a podcast called the No Destination Podcast, which we'll have the link, by the way, in the description of this video, covers Syracuse football and all things Syracuse sports looks like. He went on record today on a podcast talking about how, indeed, the rumors and all the speculation was true. He was chased out of Columbus by Ryan Day and company shortly after losing the Michigan game. And I... <laughs> I gotta, I gotta be honest with you, Ohio State fans. Of course, once again, I'm a Michigan fan. I don't try to hide that. I don't try to play around that. I don't try to act as if um, I'm this completely unbiased source of information or unbiased opinion here. Um, maybe this is a little bit of that kicking in, but this is just <laughs> wild to me that this is actually true. And I wanted to get on the mic tonight. And talk about it because I've I've got thoughts, of course, I've got opinions on the Kyle McCord tenure at Ohio State, the very short-lived Kyle McCord tenure at Ohio State, and some things with the Ohio State fan base at large. Though I'm not talking about all Ohio State fans when I say this, I don't see you as like this monolith of people. Of course, nothing in this world is that simple, but the majority of Ohio State fans. And it seems like the Ohio State coaches seem to have this weird, skewed view on quarterback play and the level of quarterback play that should be expected at Ohio State. And I think that's a little, it's a little, it doesn't necessarily agree with reality sometimes, in my opinion. But really, there are three main points I want to make in this video to break it down for you guys really simply. And before we really get into it, by the way, like the video, help get it up into the algorithm, help this channel continue to grow that way. I really appreciate the over 2,000 subscribers we have already, by the way. And of course, you can subscribe, become one of the soon to be hopefully 5,000 subscribers we will have by the end of 2024, which is our goal. And the first point I wanna argue, and I'm gonna clarify this with something to start out with, because I do have a YouTube channel. There is a record of this. And me trying to be a Michigan fan who's like, all of a sudden Kyle McCord is gone and I'm defending him. I've been defending Kyle McCord this whole time. <laughs> this whole past season in 2023, I thought Kyle McCord was a pretty good quarterback and the numbers bear that out. I know the numbers aren't everything. I know there's probably already people running to the comments to say, well, he missed this throw here. He missed that throw there. Did you see his play at this period of time in this game? Look, disagree with the numbers as much as you want. Say that, that he missed this given throw or that given throw on a certain play here or there all you want. I will die on this hill when it comes to evaluating and analyzing college football or anything for that matter. The numbers and the data give us the most accurate picture of what happens on the field. Not the complete picture, but it gives us the most accurate sense of how well somebody played or how well somebody didn't play because the numbers don't care about your opinion of a particular play. The numbers just are the numbers. And the numbers for Kyle McCord in 2023, remember, first year starting quarterback for the Ohio State Buckeyes, 66 completion percent completion percentage within the top 20 in the entire country, might I add, 3,170 yards, 24 touchdowns. He had a 162 pass efficiency rating and a 9.1 yards per attempt. Again, a lot of Michigan fans and other rival fans and other people, I think, are trying to say, and it gets a little hyperbolic sometimes, they try to say, make him out to be some great quarterback or some, I don't know, borderline all-American guy or some. Hyperbole is a thing that happens all the time in college football. I'm not saying he was great. I'm not saying he was elite. He was a pretty good college quarterback, though, according to the numbers. He won 11 games in his first year starting the Ohio State Buckeyes. And it is, again, just wild to me that Ryan Day and company would chase him out of town. But that's the thing. That's the thing that I think is just... I got to stop for a minute. 
I'm going to start to get ahead of myself here. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want this to be somewhat measured. I want this to be a measured response to an argument, honestly, that I see out there a lot from Ohio State fans, especially. And I think this goes to plays into what we're going to get into deeper in a minute here. And that is that you need an elite quarterback to win a championship. Now, Kyle McCord certainly was an elite, but we just got into it a minute ago. He was pretty good. And there's this myth- mythology out there amongst Ohio State fans and college football fans in general that you need like an elite generational quarterback to win championship. And obviously the standard in Ohio State is national championships. And hats off to them. That is, uh, well, you can see my really messed up hair under there. Hats off to them. That is a great standard to have. You're a great program. Seemingly always have been and probably always will be. But that's not necessarily true. Georgia in 2022, for instance, won the national championship with a guy that went 68% on his passes for 4,000 yards, so quite a few more yards, but 27 touchdowns and had a lower pass efficiency rating than Kyle McCord. And his name was Stetson Bennett. And if you're into these kind of deeper analytical stats, he had 9.1 yards per attempt in 2022, just like Kyle McCord did. Same exact amount of yards per attempt. When you're a team like Ohio State and you have elite defenses like you had in 2023, when you have rosters that are filled with five stars, when you have a great offensive line, you have great running backs, great receivers, great tight ends, Top to bottom, your roster is one of the best rosters in all of college football. You don't necessarily need an elite quarterback. And I think one of the main points I really wanted to get into this video, too, is how much of an indictment this really is on Ryan Day as a head coach. You know, I don't see it out there often, but a lot of a lot of Ohio State fans like to put Ryan Day in this like elite head coaching category when we're kind of ranking and tiering college football head coaches. But this move that seemingly again, was made by Ryan Day and has been backed up by all the fans and defended by all the fans, is basically saying that he can't win a national championship without an elite generational quarterback. And of course, Ohio State has had three of those before they had Kyle McCord. We'll get into that in a minute. But you're telling me that you can't win a natty without that kind of player at the quarterback position when you're also telling me that Ryan Day, the Ohio State fan base, and many other people who are Ohio State, or not Ohio State, but Ryan Day defenders out there will also say this. Josh Pate says this. Uh, J.D. Bakel says this often. They defend Ryan Day to the utmost. But you're telling me that you can't win a national championship with a top five roster in college football and just mere good quarterback play when guys like Kirby Smart and Nick Saban are? And by the way, Jim Harbaugh? Jim Harbaugh just won a national championship with J.J. McCarthy and great. Listen, I love J.J. I think he's a great quarterback. I think he's a borderline elite NFL prospect, but he's not Trevor Lawrence. He's not, <laughs> he's not, a, even, a, he's not even a Kyler Murray, or he's, he's not a Caleb Williams. Michigan just won a national championship with that guy at quarterback, and you're telling me that it is nearly impossible for you to reach your goals without that level, without, without a Caleb Williams or a high-level, super-elite quarterback. And by the way, even when you did have one in C.J. Stroud, you couldn't get there. So it can't be true that Ryan Day is an elite, top-of-the-line college football head coach, and also true that he can't do anything without an elite quarterback when guys like Kirby Smart, again, won a national title, Two national titles, by the way, back to back, with Stetson Bennett as his head, as his quarterback. Excuse me. And Nick Saban, a lot of people forget, because he's had some elite level quarterback in latter seasons, borderline elite with guys like Jalen Hurts. But he was winning national championships with guys like AJ McCarron and Greg McElroy back in the day. What would, what could Ryan Day do with a Greg McElroy at quarterback? 
it tells me that the system that Ohio State has been running for the past few years is kind of flawed and that when it's built in to where you absolutely need an elite generational quarterback to even be competitive at the highest level of college football, when you have, again, Ohio State recruits better than most anybody outside of the Georgias and Alabamas of the world, top five recruiting classes like each of the past four or five years, you're telling me that you're not as great of a coach as you really make yourself out to be. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. When other guys are out here that are able to do it. Again, Jim Harbaugh winning a national title with an elite defense, great ground game, and J.J. McCarthy barely having to throw the ball. Kirby Smart winning with Stetson Bennett back-to-back. And Nick Saban out here able to win with guys like A.J. McCarron. And even guys like Mac Jones weren't like the greatest college football quarterbacks Tells me you're not all that you're cracked up to be as a head coach. Now, get, don't get me wrong. Even as a Michigan fan, I still think Ryan Day is a great coach. I'll give him all the credit in the world for all the success, success that he has had at Ohio State. But there's something wrong there when I see elite head coaches able to do more with less. And then Ryan Day say, no, top 10 in uh, pass efficiency, by the way. That's where Kyle McCord was this past season. He was seventh in the country and pass efficiency rating. He was in the top 20 in completion percentage. He threw for over 3,000 yards and 24 touchdowns in his first starting season as Ohio State's quarterback. And he says that's not good enough. And that brings me really to the last point in this video, which is I've heard this argument from lots of Buckeye fans. I got into it with a Buckeye fan on Twitter about a week ago about this because we actually touched touched on this subject a little bit. And I'm going to be a guest on his show. Shout out to Garrison, uh, co-host of the Scarlet and Blue show. Can't wait to be on in a couple weeks. Really looking forward to that. Maybe we can discuss this there. But there is this defense made by Ohio State fans of this move. And again, I'm not talking to all Ohio State fans here because I know that some of you, you're, you're, you all vary in your opinions on all this. And again, I don't think Kyle McCord is anything great but again good quarterback on a great team the excuse for last season isn't that you didn't have a good quarterback I think when I see other coaches able to win national titles with just good quarterbacks and great rosters anyway I digress already gone over that but the defense I see by so many Buckeye fans out there including Garrison co-host of the Scarlet and Blue show go check it out it's also on YouTube it's a great show it's a Michigan Ohio State exclusive show. That's all they really talk about. Hosted by a Michigan fan, Ohio State fan. It's great. The defense that I see is that the standards at Ohio State are simply that high. That that's the standard. The standard for a playing quarterback at the Ohio State University is elite. You have to be an elite generational level quarterback in order to play play at that university. And that's fine. Listen, standards are great. We all want to have standards in everything we do in life, our businesses, in our jobs. Me on this podcast, I have standards. I don't like to make content, for instance, unless I think I have something to say that's even slightly novel or different or gets people thinking. And I like to think I put out pretty good content out there. 2,000 subscribers in only eight months kind of proves that. A little pat on my back right there. A little pat, pat myself on the back for that one. But standards are only great if they're reasonable. I'm going to give you guys an analogy. I worked in a machine shop for, I think it was about six years. Yeah. And in that machine shop, we had a standard where nothing left the shop that was outside of our standard tolerance. Of course, you have tenths, hundreds, and thousands. I worked in the welding department as a welder fabricator. Nothing left the shop with any dimension on it that was outside of a sixteenth of an inch or sixty thousandths of an inch, 0. 0.060 out of tolerance. That was our standard. That's what we set our, lived by and set ourselves up for success with. That was reasonable because it was something we could bring to our customers and say, this is what we do on a consistent basis. And this is really great work because we know with the things that we make and the customers that we make them for, if it's within that, it'll work for them perfectly fine and look great. It would be, however, completely unreasonable if we made our tolerances like 
nothing can be outside of one one thousandth of an inch because i don't know if you've ever built anything before either in carpentry or construction or welding or machining that is nigh impossible <laughs> and that's what we're getting to here with this standard argument for ohio state i mentioned it a few minutes ago ohio state had three back to back to back elite generational talents at the quarterback position and again tip my hat all day to them all the respect in the world to them they're a great program who had a great run they had Dwayne Haskins they had Justin Fields CJ Stroud all first round picks if I remember I know Justin Fields and CJ Stroud where I'm pretty sure Haskins was as well RIP great guy from everything I've seen I think that skewed the perception of Ohio State fans and now from this move that Ryan Day seemingly meant of kicking Kyle McCord out the door even the coaching staff in thinking that that is something that is attainable, that that is something that you can, something that's a sustainable, excuse me, I don't know why I said attainable there. It's late. I have a toddler. That's my excuse. That's always my excuse if you follow the channel. And thinking that that's something that's sustainable is where you're really making the mistake because elite generational quarterbacks, there's a reason why we call them that. They really only come around once a class. And you got three right back to back to back. That's great. But that was never going to continue. That was never going to be something that you can keep recruiting five-star quarterbacks, by the way. But we all know this. When you're talking about 18, 19-year-old kids with a five-star rating on them, that's not a guarantee. That's a lottery ticket. You're taking a chance on a kid who could be really good to great, to elite, et cetera, et cetera. But when you get guys like Kyle McCord in, and even now, with guys like Aaron Nolan and Julian Sand, you don't know. And the floor for most five-star quarterback recruits is good, I would say. Good college quarterback, you know, two, three-year starter, goes on to the NFL and at least gets drafted in the third or fourth round and plays as a backup in the NFL. That's what, that's what, good, that's what the floor should be for a five-star high school quarterback, in my opinion. But then again, there are busts all the time do when it comes to five-star quarterbacks recruiting them we all know that guys like dj Aguilalele and uh i'm blanking on his name now spencer rattler were both highly rated recruits that have now bounced around and don't look like they're going to do much of anything in the nfl of course michigan back in the day recruited a kid named shane morris who was a highly rated five-star recruit and you've probably never heard of shane morris unless you're a michigan fan because he didn't turn out to be anything that happens that's built in you can't expect to just keep getting five-star quarterbacks and for them to all be Dwayne Haskins and C.J. Stroud. And if that's your standard, that's not reasonable. Again, you've got a roster from top to bottom that's one of the top five, I would say top two or three, in all of college football. And you're telling me that you absolutely need top-tier, high-end, elite quarterback play to get where you need to be? When other elite head coaches out there are winning championships with Stetson Bennett, that tells me that you're maybe not the head coach that your fans, your media make you out to be. But again, this is me, Michigan fan, probably super biased, probably going to get a lot of comments on this one, but I bring it on. I do. Maybe we'll continue the discussion forward. Again, I think Ryan Day is a great coach and it's his team. It's his decision. That's fine by me. Whatever he wants to do. It's just wild to me. By the way, we didn't even mention it in this video. 2022, CJ Stroud, pretty successful year. Uh, ended up going to the playoff, unfortunately losing to Georgia on a last second field goal. But in 2022, CJ Stroud, completion percentage, 66%. The exact same as Kyle McCord from this last season. Yardage, just over 3,600. About 500 more yards, 41 touchdowns, so a lot more touchdowns, and a yards per attempt of 9.8, so 0.7 more. Not entirely all that much better, at least statistically. Again, I'm more of a stats guy. You can break down the film. You can tell me what you think of people, but at the end of the day, it's, that's all subjective. The numbers don't lie to me. Anyway. That's going to wrap up the video, guys. Thank you for letting me ramble on this topic for a little bit and get some points across. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think Ryan Day 
pushing Kyle McCord out of Columbus was the right move. What do you think of Ohio State's quarterback battle going forward with Will Howard and all that? Do you think those guys are objectively better than Kyle McCord? Do you think they will just automatically be better than Kyle McCord next year? Let me know in the comments. And again, I'm not trying to pile on hate or anything. I just think this is an interesting topic and a definitely an interesting move. Again, I do respect Ryan Day as a great head coach. He has been very successful so far in his tenure outside of obviously the Michigan struggles and not getting over that hump in the playoff. And it's his right to make the move to tell Kyle McCord to transfer. It's my right to critique him for that though. So that's all I mean to do here. This is of course has been what I think is another great video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, of course. And um, until next time, Ohio state fans always hate me for saying this, but this is how I end every video. Go blue.